uh, in that lane. Remaining. So Warlock probably Last tied to that top lane, but that was probably the plan anyway. So. Slardar, right back to bottom lane, just looking to run a couple of pulls here and there, but when has tabs on it. And I'm missing first blood because Ninja Boogie is getting dived under the tower. Because if they're sacrificing themselves to try and shut down the TA, that might not work out. Legion Commander going to go for the duel up top. Can she finish off Raging Potato? She will actually be able to. Looks like might end up dying to the Fatal Bonds, but well worth it. Does not get the dual victory, but Ninja Boogie does not get any experience for that. Slardar already working towards a wand right now, it looks like. Ninja Boogie going to get crushed up. They do need to be careful about going for this one, but maybe the Lagoon Blade finishes the kill. Not going to be a Bloodstone charge, but... Armel still going to be pretty happy with it. This should be a decent Dyer's opportunity for the fight, but Clutch Chambers are just not giving them any opportunity. And now they're going to jump in, look for the duel here on Wen. He's a long way forward. They've got the jump in crush along with the amplified damage. There's the duel. The tower even getting a little bit involved. They get the deny as well. 30 gold away. That was such a brutal death at bottom. And Mushi, all right, does find a nice little pick off on Fly Solo. Not really exposing any of their other heroes. He is oinking away. Adam can go running in, but it's not dead just yet. They are going to throw out the epicenter along with the chaotic offering. Can they get the Roshan last hit? Mushi jumping in. Finishes off the Slardar. Bristleback. Unable to grab the Aegis as everybody on Clutch Gamers disconnects. All right. We're unpausing. It's time to go, Gabby. It's time to turn your back. He pops everything, they do get the nukes, Adam's gonna lose the Aegis pretty quickly, Legion Commander running in, Aging Potato backing up a little bit, Triple Remnant forward, Gabby's still alive, here comes the Freezing Field, Crystal Maiden letting it go, they have managed to lose Mushi, he got Laguna Bladed, when unable to get off any other spells, he did manage to use his mech, but he's now out of mana, he's running with the Repel, they're still retreating back up onto the high ground, Fly Solo being very aggressive, we'll take Kibara Strike, setting up for Amel somewhat, he does survive a little bit with his wand. Adam getting brought down for the second time. They've got the duel. And it looks like even with the Rosha not going the way that they were hoping, CG are going to be able to take this fight with flying colors. Double kill for Armel. He's going to build up those bloodstone charges to 16. Potato trying to cut the wave. I don't think he can solo kill him, but he's going to try. He's got the armlet. How many procs can he get? His health is dropping faster than the taunt bar, and he's actually dead. Nice, easy pickoff. Rappy gonna add another bit of damage onto the dual pile as the tier 2 tower mid is also taken down. Not that much to dispel on the uh, Clutch Gamers side, honestly. We got an epicenter jumping in, they're looking for this kill on the lead and they will be able to get it. Mushi also jumping in with his blink. They try to get the crush, but Boombax was getting caught by the Ember Spirit. They will be able to get the duel on the Omni Knight and finish him off quickly. That was the 10 second BKB popped out by the Legion and Bristle. Actually getting kited nicely. Ember going to look for further kills over on the other side of the fight, but they've got a long duration route and a couple of auto attacks along with the Amplify damage will bring the Ember down. Mushi's still just waiting in the trees. They now have an Aegis Bristle back to contend with. Ember Spirit just gonna get rooted up here on the high ground. Does manage to side of fist to dodge a little bit, but nicely held on Boombax. Not using a crush until it was absolutely necessary, and that's just a free pickoff. Alright, jump in, Burrow Strike, only on the Legion. Nice crush counter initiating when can he keep the Sand King alive? God no he can't. BKB does get popped for the Legion Commander, but that's one lane of Rax already gone, and Clutch Gamers just gonna keep on marching over towards top lane. Omni um, Knight just stay. Hearing his buildings get torn apart, Mushi has TP back after taking that tier 2 at bottom. Does grab the Orchid, ready to try and fight, but two lanes of Rax down already, and the Aegis of the Immortal is already... The, the Aegis of the Immortal is still in hand. Armel manages to get himself a little bit further back with the Shadow Blade. They've got some damage coming out from Five Solo, just channeling the ultimate in the middle of the fight. Draws some attention from the Ember Spirit, but they've lost both of the supports. They did get Ninja Boogie popped, Rappy being focused, but he's got the Heaven's Halberd, so... He's extremely tanky. They will lose the Crystal Maiden. Boom back. All brought down, but Armel just going to stand his ground. Finishes off the Ember. Mushi still very healthy. Does get the Silence onto the Lena. BKB gets popped, but that's not going to save her from that Templar Assassin auto attack. They are managing to kite the Bristle back, but now he's maybe found his way into the fight. Mushi still repelled. Still going to work. And Gabby calling for a bit of help from his teammates. Boom back's ready to blink and crush now, but looks like CG content to take the two lanes of Rax. I don't know. I think Gabby could just hit the buildings, and even if they focused all five heroes on him, he would still get 
all three of these remaining buildings for Maneski. They're staring at him. Raging Potato threatening a little bit of damage with some remnants, but what's it really doing? They do have the Chaotic Offering, but it's not... They head up in 30 seconds time. And that is not... Not enough. That's not soon enough. Gabby is just zoning everybody back. They will be able to jump in aggressively. They've managed to find the Slaughter, but he's got the Ghost Scepter to keep himself alive. Adam with the Epicenter doing basically nothing as Maneski now forced to retreat back to their shrines. Ninja Boogie tries to get a heal on the TA, but she was isolated. And Mushi with no buyback brought down. Duel on the Sand King. He hits the deck. They will get the buyback from the Ember Spirit. But the good game's already been called, and CG, despite an unfortunate disconnect at the Roshan pit, will absolutely steamroll this game. They were winning at every single moment. They knew exactly how to shut down the Templar Assassin. Could be something that they look at. It is a good combo with the Darkseer. They pick a Timber Saw. What sort of prize is this? We'll be able to interrupt the pull and probably get this kill on the Ogre. Ogre's pretty tanky, but there is a Whirling Death, and that's going to be First Blood, Raging Potato, Arcane Boots at a very fast pace. Not the biggest deal to lose the Ogre, but much better start for Mineski here in Game 2 than they, they got off to in Game 1. Ingersoll's not actually looking that healthy right now. they got some max level raises waiting for him. Raging Potato! Armel's waiting, first Dre's running forward, couple of auto attacks, Darkseer's dead on the bottom side of the map as well, and Clutch Gamer's finding two easy pickoffs that should be the Thrun Tower as well. What was, what, what, did, what happened to Darkseer? They do have level 5 on Ninja Boogie, so again, as I was anticipating, gonna get some decent levels, Raging Potato, tank it in the raises, there is a third raise, long range, ready to go, and Boombax interrupts the Timber Chain, beautifully played. Raging Potato, I I feel like I jinxed him, burning him down a little bit, but still reasonably tanky. Runs in now. Is he going to get stunned up? They get the silence down. They get the glimpse back into the stack storm as well, looking like no escape for the Vengeful Spirit as a big rotation for Mineski. Raging Potato actually just going to give up on that top push and make his way down bottom to keep on spamming to defend. Mushi jumping across aggressively, looking for the Shadow Fiend kill, who does turn around, snipes the raise, now he's got the living armor, Mushi's doing zero damage, and the shield comes in. Mushi still wants this kill, but I think this is a step too far, he won't be able to get the blink off either. Refraction is still on cooldown, two seconds to go, he pops a trap at the raise, drops him down, Armel with the double kill, the team there, setting him up. They do end up losing two on the bottom lane, looks like getting a glimpse back onto the Venge, and also losing the Ogre, but... The Shadow Fiend stands proud. Crazy net worth lead and uh, snowballing the game, but looks like Shadow Fiend is going to be just as capable. Nice swap to interrupt the Timber Chain, and Raging Potato finds himself under the tower with not enough reactive armor stacks to live, and he'll be brought down. Vengeful Spirit has your Dragon Lance up now, but. Yep. The scary thing is that this. Oh my god, the tree protector's here. He's got the overgrowth ready. Can he bail out his carry? That's the question. He somehow manages to run through the kinetic field after it runs out. Templar Assassin doesn't have any defensive abilities to be able to keep her alive. She has been dusted up, but it looks like Rain Potato should be able to kill off that ogre. A bad now chasing forward. They get the swap back into the stun. Armel arrives on the scene, and they once again burst down the timber. Is he going to get it this time? Come on, Adam. You're, you're behind a courier snipe here, buddy. Oh, I couldn't get the third hit. And then reveals his position as well. Meanwhile, CG just heading into the Roshan. They've got the Vlads. They've got the Medallion. Don't have the Solar Crest just yet. A little bit of Chakram damage coming in. They do have the mech here on the Darkseer. It's to be careful not to get bursted down. And they get the back back into the wall. Static Storm over the top. They lose both of the supports, but everybody else is still alive. Armel dropping out the raises, looking to auto-attack down. Ren will do it. And now losing some life, but should still be healed up by the Abaddon. Has the raises. Abaddon now helping him out. The shield is off cooldown. Mushi forced back the swap onto Ninja Boogie. Can they burst Gabby? He's fairly tanky. And now Adam finally arriving to this fight. Drops the smoke screen down again. They will buy back on the Disruptor. But the Radiant supports respawning soon. Abaddon does not have his ultimate. Gets glimpsed back, but still has a little bit of help. Another train protector respawning. Will be able to living armor him. As Gabby picks up the double kill, taking down Ninja Boogie for the second time. And CG head straight into the Roshan pit once again. Timber saw, even with a Hood of Defiance, not enough to keep him alive through that fight. TA trap slowing him down. Vengeful Spirit would love to get the swap off, but not gonna happen. And. Solo 
A little bit of a jig as they come in and just absolutely melt this here too. They get the swap out, but Mushi blinks immediately. Can he get overgrowth? Manages to dodge it. Meld's there. They get the vacuum back. It's on to five, but... Unfortunately, there's just no follow-up. CG pushed straight past the tier two tower. Now they'll bring it down. They've got a little bit of chalk room spam to try and hold this out, but there's nobody on Mineski split pushing or anything, so... It isn't a waste of time at all for CG to be here as five themselves. They really need Mushi to be off threatening this bottom tier one tower or something, but Armel's just hitting the tier three. There isn't a glyph for another minute or so. Shadow Fiend, undeterred. They need to be careful about the glimpses. They're going to play as a team. They do get the Vac back. He manages to force death himself a little bit further out, and it's only the Abaddon caught, and he's just going to relish in the Static Storm, heal himself back up to full. Raging Potato makes it to the high ground. But he still ends up dropping. 40 seconds dead for him. Shadow Fiend healing up with the Vlads. Abaddon drops a little bit, but they've got the start of the Mushi and they've got the burst damage. No way to save him. Even with the smoke screen drop down, Armel still just right clicking through. And now the tier three about to drop. Position one and position two both dead. Mushi unwilling to use the back. Look at that, will just mean that they sacrifice a full lane for X. Ninja Boogie trying to figure out what he can do, but I mean, no Static Storm means no damage. Gabby just gonna slide himself forward, picks up Mega Kill Streak, and Mineski absolutely falling apart at the seams. GG's called. 19 minute GG. Clutch Gamers will do it. They're gonna advance into the next round. They'll be matching up against TNC later on in the competition. And what a convincing performance.